never wants to work for me and I don't know why. I think the middle parts are so cute and my hair just doesn't want to freaking cooperate. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing a Q&A. I haven't done a Q&A on my channel in a little while. I asked you guys on my Instagram the other day and I got some questions, some newer questions that I haven't answered before so I'm super excited about that. But I was going to film a fall favorites and then it was actually what was voted most on my little like poll thingy. <laughs> Excuse me ma'am, I think you could sit down. I'm gonna film a fall favorites video and I didn't because I don't feel like I've had enough time to try out all the new fall things. I've tried and I've used some of the same fall things in my previous fall videos that I've done in the past and I don't know, I just don't really feel like I've gotten a good enough full fall yet to really do a fall haul. But that will be coming, don't you worry your little pumpkin hearts. I will make sure that I try a ton of new fall things and review them for you guys. Also wanna try some of the new Starbucks pumpkin drinks, the cold foam pumpkin cold foam brew, cold brew or something like that. I'm really excited to try that. Even though I really haven't been going to Starbucks lately, I've just been kind of wanting to try it. So anyways, we are going to jump right into the Q&A. I asked on my Instagram. These are the Instagram questions that I received from you guys. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. This is the first question, of course, always about Austin and I. I always get these DMs about Austin and I. So first one, did you and Austin ever go through patches where you were less affectionate? I personally have not. Austin and I, both of our love language are physical touch and words of affirmation. So, you know, don't get me wrong when there's just regular life stuff going on, we still make it a priority to be affectionate towards each other because I think that's just both very important to the both of us. So I don't, I wouldn't say that we've gone through like patches, like time periods where we've just been not affectionate towards each other. But obviously there are some times when just life gets in the way and you know, we can't just sit around on the couch all day snuggling and being like, I love you, even though you would like that. Next question, what piercings do you have? I used to have a ton of piercings actually. If you've been around from like the Tumblr days, I had so many piercings. I had my nose pierced, I had double belly button piercings, I had them like three in my lobes and then double cartilage and I had all that stuff. But I took a lot of those out and the only ones that I have are my tragus. I have, I think this is called the rook, I think. And then just two in my lobes. And then on this side, I have the front helix. I think that's what that's called. What is your favorite post-workout meal? I love breakfast as a post-workout meal, which I don't usually get to do because I typically train after breakfast. But on Saturdays, when I do the early morning classes, I come back and I'll make Austin and I like a bomb weekend breakfast of French toast and eggs or like breakfast pizza. Ugh, love that. I could eat breakfast seriously at any time of the day. I just, I am a hardcore breakfast person and I love when it's post-workout because I'm usually really hungry. So that's my favorite. But if it's not breakfast, then a post-workout shake. And I've been trying some new protein powders lately. So I'm really excited to let you guys know how I feel about that. Um, I've been such like a creature of habit with my protein. And to be honest with you, I don't drink a lot of protein shakes in general. So it's a tough like subject for me to fully review because I don't have a lot to compare it to. But nonetheless, I will let you know after I give it my full, you know, the full experience and try it out for a while and let you guys know how I like it. This is a question I get asked all the time. Where do you get your music for your videos? Do you not get copyrighted? I have tons of copyrighted videos on my channel. I think I've mentioned this before in a Q&A, but YouTube is not my main source of income. I do these videos for fun. I love editing. I love vlogging and I love looking back on things in my life. So some of my videos are copyrighted just because I don't care. Like I'm not trying to make money off of my YouTube videos, but the ones that are not copyrighted, I actually have a subscription to a website where like I pay monthly to use non-copyrighted music and that's what I use um, I think it's called epidemic sounds or epic sounds something like that I use that for like cooking or sometimes workout footage it just depends but I subscribe to that and then sometimes I can find things on Spotify but then I have to go to SoundCloud and download them so it's kind of confusing but I typically stick with the epic sounds or whatever that subscription is what do you do when you feel stuck like no game in body weight and PRs. So I think the longer that you do this, both tracking macros and weightlifting or CrossFit, you kind of realize that PRs are like few and far between. I don't think I've PR'd other than when I broke my hand and I PR'd my front squat afterwards, but that's literally because 
all I did was front squat for seven weeks. But prior to that, like I haven't PR'd my snatch since last December. It's been almost a year. Clean PR. I did recently hit after I broke my hand, but I think, again, that's because of the squatting. I think that the longer you do this, you kind of just accept that it's not always gonna be like PRs left and right, or like, especially with tracking macros and body composition, the longer that you do it and the more change that you've already made, it's like the less change starts to happen and it's just part of the process. I did make a video about plateauing though. If you're interested in that, I'll link that video because I do think that's a really good video, especially for beginners who feel like they're plateauing, but, as far as me personally, I feel I have weighed roughly the same for like the last year, give or take like five pounds. And PRs are just kind of few and far between. Do few and far between, yes, I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you saying you were in credit card debt for a while and how'd you get yourself out of the situation? Ooh, good question. Yes, I did. So when I first moved out, I moved out when I was 17. And then when I was 18, I was very immature with my money and my finances and put a ton of things on credit cards. Biggest mistake, don't recommend doing that. But what I actually did back then, I think I was like 19 or 20, I got... I signed up for a debt consolidation company. I do not recall the one that I used, but it was one that a lot of people at the police department had recommended, so I felt like it was safe. And basically what that does is that combines all your credit cards into one payment and you make a payment to them and they shut down your credit cards. So I legitimately, after I racked up a bunch of credit card debt, it wasn't like a bunch, it was like a couple thousand dollars, maybe like, plus school because I paid for school back then out of pocket. I still do, but like then I was putting on credit cards. Now I actually have the money. But I did not have any credit cards for a while. Like I had one in case of an emergency, but all the other ones that I had racked up, they got closed. And yes, it did hurt my credit for a while, but now my credit's very good because I spent all those years since then building it back up. So I would say if you're struggling, what worked for me personally was a debt consolidation company. And you can kind of look around or ask people if anyone you know has used things like that. But it was very very helpful for me and it also every time I would see that statement of like all the credit cards going down it was just so rewarding for me and then eventually once I paid them all off I didn't have those accounts and then I opened like newer ones like ones that have benefits for me for traveling when I was with um, Austin doing long distance and I did things like that so that I would actually get use out of the credit cards instead of just spending money I didn't have can you please sit down just just somewhere okay right there is okay Okay, she wants to be in a video, okay. <laughs> you say water different than all Floridians, I know. That is because it is a Pennsylvania accent, I know. I say water, weird, and orange, and Florida, I also say it's, I know, it's weird. Just my mom, my entire family on my mom's side have that same accent, and I just have always had it since I was a kid, and I know people always make fun of me for it. How did you feel about how the CrossFit Games went? Oh my God, we didn't watch the CrossFit Games. I know. <laughs> I was actually not really into the CrossFit Games this year. The new format was kind of like, meh, I didn't really care. I wasn't, just that passion for the CrossFit has significantly gone down since they've changed. And just since the changes in my life too, I'm just, I'm not really as passionate about it as I have been in the past. And I truthfully did not watch the game. So we need a video on how to mow your lawn. I actually YouTubed some of that. I really did, I'm not gonna lie. How long does it take to edit videos for YouTube? It seems kind of strenuous. Yes, this is why I had to switch to one video per week. I used to be able to do two when I wasn't working as much as I am now, but I have a lot of nutrition clients. I'm coaching multiple classes at the gym, and then I also now have taken on PT clients. So that in combination with just training myself, school, it's just too much to sit down and edit a video. Simple sit down, talk through videos like this take me a little less time because I know what I said and I know like it's just, I'm just sitting here, there's not a lot of editing to do. So maybe like an hour to two hours for something like this, but the longer vlogs that you see will take me days at a time because I can't just sit down for like six hours and edit a video and go through footage. So it just depends, but I guess it kind of depends on the video. Since moving in together, has your relationship gotten better? I think, Honestly, our relationship gets better every day and I know that sounds really cliche, but even still after over a year of being together, we still have never been in like an argument. Like we will disagree about something and we just communicate and talk about it, but we still like have stuck to our kindness and our just like our overall respect and friendship, I guess you could say. Like 
and even now more so like getting to know each other even more on a deeper level i feel like that's been prioritized and so i would say yes i think our relationship's great but then again i'm biased you find it difficult to keep up with content for your youtube videos yes i do that's why i'm doing q a because i didn't know what else to do within the fall video so here we are how come the comments are disabled on my instagrams uh it's on my instagram stories the comments are disabled on my instagram stories because I truthfully get a lot of DMs and I want to be able to re reply to like personal messages that people choose to send me, not just like a reply to my story. So I try really hard to make sure I get back to everybody and I just felt like with the replies being on, it was just too much. And also people felt the need to comment like really unnecessary things on that. And some of them were very hurtful and rude. And so I just mixed it all together. How to keep your relationship healthy. Obviously this is gonna vary person to person, but um, I think the biggest thing for the both of us has just been communication, um, being very honest with each other and expressing our feelings. I think the biggest thing that I've experienced in the past and that I know some people struggle with is not fully telling your partner how you feel and kind of keeping things in and not really telling them the truth about things, even if it's about yourself. And I think one of the best things that Austin and I really like pride ourselves on is being true to ourselves and expressing that self to each other. And I just know that like for me, being able to be myself and whether that's, you know, through hard times with anxiety issues or whatever it may be, I'm still able to go to him and I feel safe talking to him about things and expressing myself. And I think that just keeps our relationship very healthy. And we don't have trust issues in the sense of like, I trust him 100% wholeheartedly and I know he feels the same way about me. And every issue that I've ever had previously always kind of came down to trust. And so this is the first time I've ever fully trusted someone, which is terrifying, but it's also very rewarding because I think that keeps our relationship very healthy. Question all the time, how did Austin and I meet? We did a video on this because he just like popped out of nowhere, but we have a mutual friend, Bonnie Schroeder. She lives in St. Louis and um, she is the way that we connected through Instagram. We talked on Instagram for the first time, exchanged numbers and the rest is history. Who and Austin get another dog? Ugh, I low-key want an Oreo. I did. I think we both did, but at the end of the day, he got adopted, by the way. I'm so happy he got adopted by a wonderful family, and I just feel like I love our family dynamics so much right now, and Austin agrees, and Tux and Austin, it's just, ah, uh, their, their little bond is so special, you know? I don't really want to mess that up, and I think just me doing my part by volunteering at the shelter is really rewarding in itself and I feel like that does me good to know that I'm helping in some way even if it's not providing the animal a home. Know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just, I feel like I do what I can with volunteering and then hopefully maybe one day in the future we will get a third one but I don't think right now because we don't have a giant backyard, we don't even have a fenced in backyard so that would probably be first priority before adding another little nugget to the family. Are you more of a sweet or savory girl? I am a sweet and savory mix combination. Give me that salty sweet combo any day. Even if you don't have kids, would you name traditional or very unique or family names? Um, I would say probably more unique, but not like super duper unique. Just not as traditional. Like my, mine and my brother's names were like biblical names. What season do you want to get married in? Fall. For sure, fall wedding forever. How to reverse out of an aggressive aggressive cut without gaining a lot of fat. Um, you're just gonna have to do a slow reverse diet. So basically adding in calories very slowly week to week and just trying to stay as clean, as much as I hate that word, as clean as possible. Like obviously don't go from a cut where you're eating probably a lot more high volume and lots of veggies and fibrous foods to like eating like a complete jerk and just like eating crazy things. Like that's not gonna help your case. So just do it slowly and cautiously. Current go-to for your sweet tooth. Oh my gosh, those um, JoJo's from Trader Joe's, fire good. Advice for a first CrossFit competition. Wouldn't you know I have a video on that? How do you budget and how do you become financially independent? Who girl. First of all, I didn't even know what a budget was when I was 18. I was literally the worst person with money, the worst. Now I think because of trial and error, I have become significantly better at it. And right now, I don't like sit down every week and like budget for certain things. Um, 
just to be 100% honest with you, I don't really need to do that as of right now. We don't have like, you know, kids where we're budgeting for kid food and this and that. It's just like kid food. I don't know why I said that, but you know what I mean? Like not nothing like diapers or formula and stuff like where I feel like you would need to budget for. Cause right now it's pretty consistent. Like I know what we spend roughly for groceries and I know when like our electric bill is really high. But I think back in the past, what really helped me was like, I literally wrote down in a journal you know, this was the bill for this. This was the bill for that. I put all my bills. This was what I needed to pay. This was like extra income. Like had different columns and stuff. And I also had like um, a Dave Ramsey course book that my mom gave me where you would pay off your credit card debts, the pay off the highest balance first. You know, like you would put money to that and then this one and this one kind of like a pyramid. That helped a lot too. But now I just feel like I've gotten into such a good routine and I think just experience and years practicing it is kind of what got me good at it, but I'm still not great and I'm still learning every day. What I would really like to get better at is taxes because tax season is always very stressful and I just don't really feel like I fully understand. Like I get it, but I don't like understand why certain things are the way they are. So I'd like to learn more about that, but. Have you ever struggled with disordered eating? I personally have not. And I know there are some haters out there that say that I have an eating disorder because I track my macros. And if you know me in real life, you know that that is 100% not the case. I would never tell somebody like, oh, I can't eat this or I can't eat that. Let me tell you something. If I ever tell you I can't eat something, it is because I would shit my brains out after eating it. Not because I think certain foods are bad or good. And I think that's how I personally maintained a good relationship with food, but I've never struggled with an actual eating disorder, thankfully. I think I've struggled more so with like, my own body dysmorphia issues. Like, I don't want to say that I had that, but just like, that would be more of what I struggled with, like comparing myself to other people being like, Oh, I didn't have enough muscle or I wasn't good enough. That was more so my struggle when I first got into fitness and health more so than like trying to shrink myself. And I think that also is a huge reason why, because I never started getting into fitness, wanting to lose weight. I've always been trying to gain muscle or change my body composition in that way. And I think that's probably why I never really um, struggled with like restricting and binging or something like that. If you're looking to get into nutrition coaching, where would you start looking at schools? Well, I suppose this depends on where you live. Um, Cause when I was in Florida, the two schools that were physically closest to me did not have a bachelor's in nutritional science, like the one that I'm taking. And Purdue University is also mostly online, but they do have campuses. Like they have one here where I live. Um, so I guess it would just depend on where you live and what exactly the, degree that you're trying to get is. Otherwise, I'm certified by Precision Nutrition, which is an online course that you can take. It's like a eight to 10 week course, I think it was. And that will get you Precision Nutrition certified, but just depends on what you want. What are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Whatever works for you, boo-boo. You do you. Favorite song. I couldn't tell you my all-time favorite song, but I will tell you that song, Good As Hell by Lizzo, that I just recently heard. I know it's not new, but it's older. I can't stop jamming out to that song. Love her and I love that song. You have sciatica pain caused by your scoliosis. I don't, I get more hip flexor pain than anything. How many, ooh, this is a good question. How many days a week are you excited to work out versus going due to discipline? So I think this also varies depending on what's going on that week. But I would say I'm excited to do the class workouts like four times a week. And then the Olympic weightlifting cycle, it depends. Like I hate clean and jerks. I hate deadlifts. So like three days are mostly due to discipline. The other times are good. Or if I'm having a shitty week, like let me tell you something, last week was, girl, I was not having a good week. So I was like, did not want to go at all. Favorite drink that's not water? Coffee. When to leave your gym? Great people versus crappy programming. What do you do? Ooh, that's a good question. Cause I didn't leave my old gym, not Boynton, but the previous gym because of crappy programming. Their program was actually really good. I left because of crappy people. So. If you're unhappy, I would just say to to check out something else. There's no harm in that. Just, I, I mean, at least I would like try to see what other places are around you. Maybe ask your friends, drop into a local gym. Where do you get all your cute headbands from? I get them from Junk Brands and you can use code MANDER for 20% off your order of Junk Brands. What is the quality that you admire most in Austin? Um, I think I've answered this question before, but I would really say his patience, like he is very patient and no matter what, like he never gets snappy or like in a bad mood. He's just so like peaceful to be around. Like you just, you're not really ever in a bad mood around him because he's never complaining. He's never grumpy. So 
I love that. He's just a positive energy. A last question about us too. What is the best thing about traveling with Austin? I would say kind of that because he's very patient with me. I'm not a good traveler. I'm really not. I'm very anxious. I, I complain. I do. I'm working on it. Um, but I get very nervous on planes and so it's really nice to have him there because he's very, very calming. Like our flight into New York the other week, not good not good and so he was just he's just so nice like he just you know he rubs my hair and he's like it's okay it's okay it gives it make me feel bad for like being a nervous wreck so love that for me i am gonna make shirts that say that that's also how i'm gonna end this video tell me if you would buy a shirt i'm thinking like a like a crop kind of flowy shirt like this and by the way i got this shirt in new york at like one of those five dollar walk-in stores I want to make a shirt that's crap like this with little typewriter font that just says, love this for me. <laughs> I say that on the daily and I feel like a lot of you relate to that. And so I feel like I would want to do that. So anyways, that was all the questions I got on my Instagram. Thank you so much for sending those questions in and asking. I hope I satisfied your curiosity and we are heading to Chicago this weekend to see Thomas Rhett. So I'm very excited. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Every Manders Monday, and I will see you guys in the next one. Some might say that I'm a loner, but I just call it.